varies their height. There's one and a half inches tall and one centimeter wide minus the wings. Their eyes fairies see all the way around themselves as much as a human sees forward about the same distance as a human does even though they only have two eyes facing forward like humans if you ever seen a dome mirror they're pretty much you have the idea how the fairies are able to bend the light around both sides of their head seeing both at the same time you know, both sides of their head at the same time speed they travel at 85 human feet a second at the fairy feet that's like 25,908 feet per second with their own little feet 85 feet a second human they make their homes under crabgrass lily pads besides bundles of moss inside bundles of moss inside unoccupied tree holes already pollinated flowers and on cumulus clouds human clouds there are six type of fairies their ability range all they work night and day summer autumn winter spring the, uh, a group of six of them standing still can influence an area about the size of a human's yard. Weather storms, regardless of its strength, requires about a group of ten. You know, to make a thunderstorm, you need about ten groups of fairies. I mean, you can make small little ones, but like I said, you know, each one only influences about the size of the yard. You know, a few thousand square feet, which is really small. Uh, we all know the six types of fairies. So, day after day, throughout all the seasons, all six types of fairies travel around the world, typically staying in their group dispersing all the nature and their path combining the abilities to change the environment as needed they all work together you know like the uh, the garden fairy might hibernate or might help plants hibernate they might help plants fertilize and pollinate but the animal fairies help the garden fairies plants pollinate Right, because everybody knows the bee makes the honey with the, and it carries the pollen on its fur and pollinates all the other animals. So, just like the wind can help the plants pollinate, you know, the, all the fairies work together. Um, where, where is that? Changing after the season shifts, the animals. The animal fairies and the uh, you know, close proximity they help find a bunch of stuff so I guess I'm gonna make this a fan fiction of pixie hollow because the tinker fairies and the animal fairies stick together the animal fairies protect the tinkers as they walk around finding the broken stuff the broken stuff turns into they fix it and then find the person who needs it most. It doesn't go back to the person who lost it necessarily. It goes to the person who needed it most. Which is why it was lost to begin with. It ran away. Um, all fairies have free time and the places their abilities ain't needed. They follow their little paths, changing nature, changing the seasons, and a water fairy doesn't need to drop dewdrips in the middle of the ocean so and it doesn't really work that much in the desert you know, it's just little things you know on a 24-hour cycle you know you get about six hours of downtime you know depending on the area <laughs> 
all acting as children, playing and laughing across the seasons, rolling in the grass while singing with the animals all spring, playing in the shade and taking naps during the summer, playing hiding seeking, playing hiding and seeking food in the autumn, finding each other to stay warm in the winter, basically just making the world big and full for all who lives there. All fairies are as strong as a human athlete, and combining all six of their abilities together allow them to form tangible shape-shifting illusions. Illusions so unbelievable they can even be mistaken as real humans. Unfortunately, it takes about six extra fairies to group together to do the job of the human vocal cords. Because we all know they only sound bells when you hear them talk. So you need six of them in the body using their wind and the, you know, to make sound for humans to understand if they want to speak to humans. The fairies use nature to swallow abandoned places and in magical places where mythical beings from the past still walk freely, far away from human eyes. They cover animals with flowers and grasses to know which animals come from the human realm. Yeah, it's that one. It's awesome, you know, they make magical places magic, try to turn our breaking world back into a new magical place. They make all the weather, they make all the migrations. You know, a water fairy makes the dew drops and the snowflakes. That does the same thing because it's still snow. You know, I, I don't believe in the concept of an ice side of Pixie Hollow. I think that's horrible. I mean, I'm glad they finally made them allowed to come over, but, you know, I mean, come on. It should be freely here. They, they, these are little fairies who can fly at 85 feet a second, you know, which is like four miles an hour, or four miles a second in fairy feet. But one and a half inches tall, one centimeter wide. I think they're amazing, and see all the way around their head. That's the best part. I mean, think if you're in your room, and you know your room all the way around, it's just, when you move, they just move in the opposite directions, and it follows you. It's amazing.